If you're on the free version of DaVinci Resolve and you make a lot of short form content, particularly kind of gameplay or tutorials like I do, I've got a super neat trick to show you to make your life a little bit easier. And it's for situations like this. So I've cut up my screen recording. It's in a bunch of different sections like this. I've got my vertical timeline ready to go, but I need to move it around because I need to make sure that the viewer can see what I want them to see. And it can be really annoying, right? Because you go and you move this over here and then you go and that's okay. And then the next clip, it's centered again. So you have to move this and then you want to try and make them so they feel seamlessly cut together. It's all a bit of a faff. So you may be thinking that what you can do is grab an adjustment clip, right? And you put an adjustment clip above all of this. But the problem with adjustment clips, if we change the position, it crops off the sides, which is very annoying. And it's something we've asked Blackmagic to change for ages. Please, Blackmagic, can we override the timeline resolution in Fusion? It'd be really handy. Please. Anyway, so what you want to do instead, highlight everything on your timeline, just get rid of any of the transforms, and then we can right click and come to new compound clip and make this a compound clip instead. Compound clips use the source resolution. So now if I change the position, it doesn't crop the edges off. So now we can keyframe this entire thing in one big go rather than having to do it in individual chunks. But the downside to this is still the fact that you can't see the edges, right? You can't see the whole screen. So you don't necessarily know where you're moving to or from because you can't see them. So instead, let's just change our timeline resolution. Easiest way is by clicking this little drop down, coming to full HD. Now we're back to our landscape timeline. Let's just reset that. Then if we click on this little icon, to enable our grids, our overlays, and enable this nine by 16 social media one. This is gonna show us what will be within the portrait timeline when we actually switch back to that portrait timeline. Now, because we only need to do our keyframings left and right, you can also make this easier as well by clicking on this little drop down and enabling the transform. That gives us these transform controls. Now what we can do, put our playhead at the very beginning, I'm going to be lazy, click this icon to enable keyframes for kind of everything within transform. And we'll just play through. I can see where my curse is going. So I'm not guessing, which is really handy. Find the point where I go to move, which is about there. We'll add a keyframe because this is the start of our movement. And now at this point, I want to be over here rather than messing with the controls within position and the inspector. If you hold shift and then click and drag left or right, you can drag this left and right, and it won't go up or down. As long as you do your left or right movement first while holding shift, and then I can just put this in the right position, hit play, and there you go. So we need to move again, so we'll do a quick keyframe, play forward a little bit, hold shift, click, drag, keep playing through, and we can just keyframe this as we need to. Let's say there's another point, keyframe, play forward a bit more, hold shift, Click, drag, let's go over to the inspector this time, and there we go. Then once you're done with this, if we switch this back to our portrait timeline, let's make this a bit bigger, and then if we hit play, we've keyframed it, and it works much better. It can feel a bit strange initially, but it's a much easier workflow to get used to because you can see everything, and you can do it all in one big go. The last thing you probably want to do is smooth the whole thing out so that it looks nicer rather than just having really linear, kind of janky little movements. So with the compound clip selected, if we click on keyframes at the very top, and then we're just gonna click on this L icon to jump over to our keyframe curves. If you see a bunch of stuff within here, all you need to do is click on these three little dots, come down to display selected parameters, video, I'm gonna untick all of them. The only thing I really care about is position X, so we'll tick that. Now we can see all of the keyframes within here. Let's get rid of the media pool, make that a bit bigger. Make sure to have this flat handle mode enabled. Then you can just highlight all of these keyframes and then you can right click any empty space, click on this middle icon to ease them in and out. It'll put super nice curves on them. And now we've got this. Woo. And whoop. super smooth, super nicely animated and it didn't take very long at all. And that ladies and gents is how I make all of my short form content. Do some zoom ins, I use Magic Zoom. Obviously, I made the, the Magic Zoom 
So I'm going to use that. It's available if you want it to punch in and out. But all of that left and right stuff, compound clip, landscape timeline, do some keyframes, curve them out, switch it back. Job done. Easy peasy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.